Yo, what is happening, guys? We got a fun video today for you. A little bit different than uh, our normal DaVinci Resolve content, but it is related to DaVinci Resolve. And I'm gonna show you why in a little bit, and I'll tell you why in a minute here. But what I wanna do is start to talk a little bit about our live stream setup here at our church. I've been helping them out, get going. Uh, they kind of had a live stream set up, but I started helping out with making the cameras look better, right? We can see our monitors here. We got three different cameras. They're PTZ cameras, and we've been trying to make our live stream a little bit better, make it a little more interesting, make it look a little bit better. And I wanted to show you our current setup because we're going to be getting some goodies here from Blackmagic Design. We're going to be getting a ATEM a Television Studio, the HD8 ISO. We're going to be replacing our current switcher, which is a Roland switcher right here, with the Blackmagic one. We're going to try it out for a little while. And then uh, I think we're probably gonna end up going ahead and purchasing an HD8. So I wanna run over our quick setup here, show you what we got, and then I'm gonna show you the HD8 when we get it, how we set it up. And the cool thing about the HD8 ISO, which Blackmagic is kind enough to lend to us for a few weeks, is that it can record multi-track, so all the videos and audios, all the things getting input into the HD8, can be recorded in the ISO version. It'll be nice to try it out from Blackmagic. We're gonna see how it can record directly into DaVinci Resolve and all that kind of fun stuff. So it might be a few videos here on the whole setup, how uh, that ATEM works, how you can get it in Resolve, what the footage looks like, stuff like that. But um, I thought you guys might be interested in it too because it is related to DaVinci Resolve. It is related to our friends from Blackmagic and a big thank you to Blackmagic for sending out the HD8 uh, that we're gonna be able to try out here at our church. So. Let me just explain to you what we've got going on here so you kind of know where we started and then where we're going to try and get to with some of the better equipment from Black Magic Design. So the current setup that we have is we have three PTZ cameras, which you can see on the screen over here. So two of the cameras that we got that are way in the back are just underneath the screen there. A little hard to see from this angle, but here's what they look like. So we got those two cameras way in the back there that we zoom in with and get a picture of the stage up here. And then we've got a third angle, which uh, was recently added. It's over here on the organ, and it's right here. It's the HE-130. Same thing as the two in the back, but this gives us a nice shot of the stage. Or if you want to spin it around, you can actually get crowd shots out here to see, you know, what's going on with the people out here, especially for like a worship night or uh, a lot of people are singing, uh, that kind of thing. You can get a shot of the audience and what's happening out here just to help the people who are online or might be watching the video kind of get the feeling and the vibe of uh, what's happening in the room here. So those are the cameras that we've got out in the room so far. So we've got three cameras. We've got a couple audio sources. We've got one that comes from our mixer out there, which mixes the whole service, the band. It's a Behringer X32 board. We've run uh, some cables, some XLR cables as an output from the board up into the switcher. We uh, have a program called ProPresenter running on a computer out in the balcony where we bring in additional uh, words for songs as well as slides when sermons are going on. We also have a downstream keyer that we put in. Then we also have two extra inputs that you can see over here that are really just uh, there for, uh, you know, uh, letting people know hey, the, the stream's gonna start soon and that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on, a lot that we've already kind of done and, and worked into this switcher here. This is a Roland uh, V60 uh, HD switcher. Yeah, V60 HD switcher. Now this switcher is pretty good. I mean, it's it's a good piece of equipment here. It does a good job, uh, but we're just looking to grow. We, we're looking for more inputs on the back here because we're a little bit limited as far as the number of SDI inputs. So we're really looking for a little bit more connectivity, uh, give us room to grow, um, some better uh, hardware here that, uh, you know, is going to last with us as we try and grow and build this thing out, add better things to the whole setup here, uh, which is why I reached out to Blackmagic and I asked if, you know, we might be able to borrow one of the ATEMs. Uh, I talked with an ATEM specialist, great guy, um, gave me tons of great information about all the ATEMs, the different ones, how they work, uh, some of the pros and the cons of the different types uh, of ATEMs. And it was really helpful. And I think the HD8 is the way we want to go to purchase. Uh, but Blackmagic had an HD8 ISO available uh, for us to borrow for a little bit and try out. So we're going to be getting that uh, probably next week. I'll get it. And then we'll get it in here. We'll get it set up. We'll figure it out, see how it all works. And then uh, I'll give you a little rundown of that and how it kind of works for us. Now, the other component that we have over here that uh, I didn't talk about yet is the PTZ controller. This is the uh, Panasonic 
AWRP120. So here's the controller board. It looks a little bit like flying an airplane here. Uh, you got, you know, all your different kinds of color controls. You got presets. You can access all kinds of settings. You've got your joystick here. You've got, you know, your zoom, your focus, your iris, all kinds of good stuff going on here. So I'm not going to get too into that. It's a little intimidating, but not too bad once you get the hang of it. But essentially, you're controlling the camera there. You're watching the screen here and you're switching over here. So it's a lot going on for the live stream. Now, it's one person on a Sunday to switch as well as to drive the cameras. So you gotta be kind of careful on what you're doing. You gotta play it safe sometimes. Make sure you got a safe angle you can always go back to. You don't wanna get stuck in a situation where things are way out of whack for the live stream, right? So keep it safe, but I have been trying to add in some movement and some some uh, you know int visual interest uh, during the live stream, different angles, our wides, our mediums, our tights, trying to pan around a little bit, especially when the band's playing and stuff. Um, and the third angle is gonna really help us be able to do that a little bit better. So that is our current live stream setup. Once we get the, uh, the Blackmagic HD8 ISO here. We're gonna set it up and uh, we'll be back. I'll show you what that looks like, how we hooked it up and um, how we're using it because uh, we'll be using it soon. So we'll catch up with you when we get all that installed. So I've got the HD8 all hooked up here. We've been using it for a few weeks here, a little over a month or so, and uh, it is a nice piece of equipment to use. Definitely pro level, the feel of everything, the way everything works. It does a really great job. The footage coming out looks great. Um, the fact that we can have all of the inputs, you know, converted to 60 frames per second that we want uh, coming out of the board, it's going to do the work for us. It's really good. It does a really good job here. And we're really happy with uh, the HD8 ISO model so much so that we've gone ahead and made a purchase because I do have to send this one back to Blackmagic pretty soon. So what I like about it is that we've got a whole ton of options that we can use when we're trying to set this thing up. We can do so much different stuff here. I'm gonna show you the software in a minute because a lot of it we, we can do through the software and some of it you have to do through the software. But I've tried recording through here. It works great, records all of the inputs that we have coming into it. Um, but the other thing that I like is in addition to having all of the pro type features is that for volunteers that are coming here to our church and they're gonna come in and use this thing, it's super easy. All they need to know is right here, we've got our, our buttons to switch our different angles, and then we can either use our T-bar right here, or we've got the auto button right here, which is gonna essentially do the same thing as the T-bar. You don't have to move around the cameras if you don't want to. I like to do that because I think it makes it a little more interesting, but you don't have to, and that's something I definitely tell anybody else who's volunteering is stay with the safe shots, right? Just stay with your static angles, make sure they look good, switch back and forth, and you're good to go. Um, so some of the other cool things that I've put on here is little looping logos that I've pulled from another computer. Um, we've got different stills that we can throw in here. I did play with some of the overlays that you can put on the screen where it'll say live up in the top corner, things like that. Uh, more or less just to try it out. We're not using it during service and stuff. But maybe at some point I'm going to create some graphics where we can have the pastor's name appear on the screen as... Uh, as they come up to preach or something like that. But a lot of great features on here. I do like the audio tools that we have. You can do a little bit of EQ if you want on your different channels as well as your main output. You can work with a little bit of dynamics on there, which is pretty cool. Um, there's just all the features that are on this thing have worked out really well. So if you need something that's really robust that can do you know, a whole ton of different stuff, yet is easy for, uh, you know, volunteers and other people to use who maybe aren't as techie or aren't as familiar with all this stuff, this is like a great way to go. As long as you've got somebody who understands how to use it and can set it up, it's really easy to use. We've got downstream keyers set up. You can just leave it on, especially when you're pulling your text from something like ProPresenter. Works out really, really good. And uh, I mean, I am super impressed with how good this thing does. It is great to use. Um, downside well i don't know if there are any downsides it's just um the only thing that i have a little trouble with sometimes is that it's big and if i'm sitting over here controlling the cameras it's a far reach to reach over here when you're doing it by yourself ideally you'd have somebody on the switcher you'd have somebody else controlling the cameras and moving them around but you know what that's kind of small things i think if you're looking at something this level You've probably got somebody who's experienced or uh, maybe you have multiple people uh, to be able to work. One person worked the switcher, one person worked the camera. So overall, I mean, it's it's a great piece of equipment. Uh, Blackmagic did awesome with this. This has been way better than I thought it would be um, when originally I was thinking about getting one of the smaller ATM, uh, AT, ATM, 
ATEM devices to try out here at church, and, and we decided to go with the big guy here, and this thing gets the job done. It really does anything that we could want, um, and the fact that it records everything internally is awesome, and we'll talk about that in another video, just what the footage looks like, uh, how it's edited together, and what we can do with it, and that kind of stuff, so... Let's jump on the computer real quick. I just want to show you the software real quick, what it looks like, and just some of the different things that you have available to you in the software. But overall, this thing is awesome. And if you need a high-level switcher, uh, professional-grade stuff uh, that's got a lot of inputs on it, this thing is where it's at. So um, let's jump over the computer, and I'll show you that software. All right, so just jumping in the software real quick here. So this is what it looks like, ATEM Software Control. And we've got all of our different buttons in here. We can assign things to different buttons. We can map things different ways. We can assign inputs to different places. Uh, there's just a lot in here and I just want to run over it real quick. I don't want to get too in depth on anything because uh, it would be here. We'd be here a long time. So we can do things like set up any of these buttons if we want. Right now we can see we're in the switcher tab right here, but we can work with color generators. We can select the colors that we want. We can do super source, which is like putting multiple inputs together on one screen. If you wanted to have a couple windows, um, a couple cameras on one screen. That's pretty cool. Um, you've got all your different keyers here that you can set up as well as your transitions, the way you set them up, however you want. Um, you can set the timing of them. We've got our downstream keyers. We've got uh, our fade to blacks. You've got your different medias you can put in here. Hyperdex, if you have that connected up. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it in this video because we don't need that. But if you need it, you know that you need it. And you probably know what it is. For our outputs, you can stream directly from this right to YouTube or to Facebook or any of these other options that you have showing right here. Um, we have the internal recorder here, which uh, you can see up here, I've got a funeral that we, re we recorded. Um, we can record to an internal drive or an external drive. So depending if you have an external drive hooked up via a USB C, 3 C, C, the little guy. Um, you can record right to it and just record from here. You can capture stills. We've got counters. You've got a whole bunch of stuff in here that you can do and set. Um, go, jumping over to the next tab, media right here real quick. We do have different things that come with the software. For example, if I navigate it to the software here, we've got cool sample graphics here that come with the program from different kinds of wipes to different images. Um, we've got different lower thirds or transition, not transitions, I'm sorry, uh, lower thirds and graphics, you know, um, and if you wanted to add it into your, your switcher, all you have to do is click, hold, drag it over to stills, boom, there it is. And now we can actually see it up on here. If we wanted to show it, you want to delete something? No problem. Just hit the X, boom, it's gone. It's just as easy as that. So there's some nice samples in there that you can use to take a look at and then make your own graphics if you want. Then we've got the audio tab here. As an audio guy, come on, I love me the audio tab, right? We've got all settings for our different inputs. Now we use a direct feed from our soundboard over there. So we just have two XLRs coming in here. We don't really need to mix the audio on this thing. Although you've got the options to do that if you need to, but on here, we just pull it right from uh, right from our, our soundboard out there. But you can see over here on our master, I did put a little EQ on there, which is not turned on at all now. I was playing with it the other day just to see how it sounds. Sounds great, it does a good job. We also have our dynamics here. You can add a compressor and a gate on there if you, if you want. Um, expander gates, compressors, limiters, that kind of stuff. So it's cool just to have the options. We also have a whole bunch of MADI inputs here, um, which we may make use of. Um, I know I was talking with some people here about that. So we might do that so that we can separate out our feeds a little bit and, and play with it a little bit more. But um, a lot of great tools in here. And then lastly, looking at the camera section here, if you're using black magic cameras, you can control the settings right here in the software. Now we're using PTZ cameras, so you can't control it here. We have to use our little controller guy back here or log in via an IP address uh, right into the cameras to be able to change settings and stuff like that. But if, if you use Blackmagic stuff, you got the options right here. Now the macros, I haven't recorded macros on it yet, but I'm gonna get into that a little bit eventually here. We've got uh, different options up here. We can change you know, what's happening with our audio. We can change our different feeds and inputs and stuff. Um, there's just a ton of stuff here. And even if we come into our preferences here, you can go to mapping and you've got the ability to map any input to any button on the, on the switcher itself. So a lot of good stuff in the software here so much. I can't even dig into it all right now, but a lot of good stuff in here that uh, really make 
your job on the switcher here a lot easier when you can jump in the software, make some changes. You don't have to hunt through menus or anything. You can do it in there in the software and it, it works out really good. So the software is really good. I haven't had any problems with it and um, makes it a little bit easier when you need to add stuff, change stuff, adjust some settings here on the HD8. So just wrapping up here real quick, if you need a pro level switcher that's got tons of options, tons of connectivity, you can do all kinds of overlays and keyers and all kinds of cool stuff with it. The HD8 is where it's at. And just like all the other products that Blackmagic Design makes, the HD8 here is awesome. It's no exception. Everything that comes out of Blackmagic Design that I've tried has been super high quality. You can tell they put the time, the effort into it to making it work good and function good. And the, the build quality of these things is just great. I mean, they're, it's solid, the buttons feel good. Everything is really good with it. So a huge thank you to Blackmagic Design for sending out the HD8 for us to try out. And if you need something that has this much connectivity, these kind of options and these kinds of things uh, that come as part of this switcher, I would recommend the HD8. It does a great job, uh, whether you're moving around out and about, whether you've got a church setup like we do here, maybe you've got a little studio setup with uh, angles and stuff and you need a switcher, check out the HD8. This thing is awesome. I've really enjoyed using it. Again, huge thank you to Blackmagic Design and uh, I'm about to go pack this thing up because I got to ship it back and uh, we'll be hooking up the new one that uh, we bought here soon. So hope you guys found this interesting. If you did, give it a little thumbs up for me, subscribe if you haven't already and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions on this thing, drop it down below. I know I had questions when we started using it and uh, couldn't always find the answer, but figured some stuff out. So if you've got a question, comment down below. All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace.